All right, in this video, we are going to start talking about functions, but we are not going to fully talk about, that's just a squiggle to try to get this to not bug out. We're not gonna fully introduce functions in this video, but we'll start. Most people, you know, most people, probably everyone in this class, right, has uh, seen functions, you know, you didn't like, oh, this is a function, it passes the vertical line test, here's the graph of the function, blah, blah, blah. But what we're doing is talking about functions just like we did with relations. We're gonna talk about functions in the abstract here. So again, I'm not formally introducing it now, but eventually we're gonna say something along the lines of this. So it's fine if this doesn't make sense, it will later. We're going to say we are going to have a function that maybe it goes from the real numbers to uh, maybe the integers. And uh, we write f of x equals y. And that means x, y is in the relation f. Now, right, f is our relation. Um, these can really be any sets which is kind of fun. A lot of times in a math class, they're gonna be the same set. A lot of times in a math class, they're just gonna be the real numbers for both of them all the time. But complex valued functions exist with complex numbers, imaginary numbers, that sort of thing. You can have functions with a, a domain of words, functions with a domain of anything. And in fact, we do come across that in a lot of computer science applications as well. But all in good time, let's go one by one with some definitions. And I know you're gonna see this definition and just groan. Oh no, that's the next definition. This definition should be new and exciting. The next definition is a groaner probably. But uh, let's, let's look at through this one. For an element or a set of elements, the image under F is the element, or again, set of elements, that results as an output. Okay, so he, let's 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 break that down because those are kind of weird. You know, it's not super easy to understand that. So as like a little example over here, let's say f of x is our traditional quadratic, x squared. Easy, comfortable, normal math that y'all have seen before. Okay, so then of course, the image, right? This is basically saying the image under f. of negative two is four. All right, and this is what our book talks about it. 99% of the time, I see it applied to sets. So that's how I'm going to treat it in these videos is sets, because that's how I always see it in higher level mathematics. Um, and of course it can apply to single like sets with a single element, but there's a very different, big difference, right? Between a set containing one element and just that element. So I do think it matters and I do think they're different. I don't like that, that the book includes this possible definition, but I usually see it referred to as sets. So here's what I mean by that. The image of the set one comma three for this function is a set one comma nine. The, the image under F is the set of elements that result. You put in one, you get out one. You put in three, you get out nine. So question, is this true or false? This next thing I'm writing down. Is the image of zero comma negative two equal to four comma zero. Think about this. Pause the video and think about this. Okay. What do you think? So your first, your first guess, idea, feeling might be no, because they're not in order. But what do we remember? We remember that sets have no order. The order is not the order doesn't isn't a thing in terms of sets. Okay? Or at least not in that way. So yes, this is true. The image of this is that set. Yep, that's true. 
All right. So that's what an image under F of a set is. All right. I think I need to roll back the version of this program. It used to work wonderfully. Now it is freaking out. Okay, so let's get on to the Groner definition. It's everyone's favorite friend, domain. Domain is a set of all possible inputs. Probably you all already knew that, and you're saying, yeah, yeah, okay, let's go. All right, we know that, you know, if, if we have a function, um, let's say it's x squared, we know what the domain is. Now, here's something interesting. We can define two possible functions here. We could define the function that takes any real number and goes to a real number and is x squared, then the domain, if we're, sorry, if we're only looking at real numbers, if we're only looking at real numbers, this function only works for numbers that are greater than or equal to zero. That's our domain. The domain is only non-negative numbers because we can't take the square root of a negative number. But if we let our outputs be complex numbers, now the domain can be any real number. So the domain kind of depends on, on what really we're talking about. All right. So again, in a traditional math class, you'll say the domain. Sorry. Oh, gosh. You're probably screaming at me right now. I'm talking about the square root function. <laughs> Whew, sorry about that. All right. We can't take the square root of a negative number unless, we, unless it's complex. So if we're only looking at real valued functions, functions where the output is a real number, and again, we'll introduce this notation later, but uh, then, we, then the domain has to be not negative. But if we're okay with complex numbers, then the domain can be all real numbers. Now, here's the thing. Here's the exciting part. You say, I've heard domain a thousand times. This isn't anything new for the domain. I know what definition's coming up next. My guess is you do not know what definition is coming up next. My guess is that you don't know what this is called. You know this is called the domain, but you probably don't know what this is called. Let's see if you're right. The codomain. You might have been thinking of another word. I won't say the other word yet, but this is a word you may have not heard before. The codomain is all the things that might come out of a function. So that's a very intentional wording here. Let's think about square root. The codomain is all real numbers. That's not a mistake. Even though, all right, I'm going to say the word, even though you probably remember from your math classes that the range of a square root function, the range is non-negative numbers, right? It's a set of all set of all x such that x is a real number and greater than or equal to zero. That's the range. It is not the codomain though. Okay. This is the codomain. It is all real numbers. All right. And again, similarly, this is the codomain. It is not the range. The range is a subset of this. I was going to say it's a much smaller subset, but actually it is the same size because remember infinity, there are different kinds of infinity, but there are some kind of infinities that are the same. There are some kind of infinities that are different. That's again, <laughs> not really relevant, not important here. Okay. So that's the codomain. Codomain is going to be the outputs. So let's get some practice with these terms. Let's jump on this example and say, let G be the function that assigns a letter grade to a student in my class in CS 330. 
All right, so this is a very important function because this is a function that I'm going to be using at the end of the quarter. It's a very easy function for me to for me to use. Um, this is actually a great uh, opportunity for function composition as well. We'll talk about that later, where I start with a student, I look at, and that student has a number associated with it, and that number has a letter grade associated with that. That's a composition of functions. There's two functions. We can just make it one function, and then we're going to have that one function here. All right, I want you to find the domain, the codomain, and a bit of a trick question, maybe. Hopefully not. What is the image of the set that contains the student you? All right, so whoever you are as a student, what is your image? <laughs> There's some mirror jokes there here somewhere. So pause the video, write down what your domain, codomain, and image of this set are. All right. So the domain is going to be all the possible inputs. So it's just going to be the set of all the students. So this is the intentional definition of that set. Remember back to chapter two on sets. I could list out all of my students and that would be the extensional definition, but it would also be a violation of FERPA. So I will not do that. We'll just stick with the intentional definition for now. The codomain set of all possible outputs however you want to define this for letter grades. Traditionally, right, it's A, B, C, D, and F. But, you know, our college has other things like vanish and incomplete and all that stuff. But let's just stick with this. And again, this is not the range. I'll tell you right now, I do not have a student who's getting an F in this class as of the time I'm recording this video. All right, so this is not the range. It's not all the actual outputs. It's the set of possibilities. This is a set of possibilities for you. <laughs> and really, we should be adding pluses and minuses in here too. But that's too much writing, so we'll simplify. Yeah, it should have pluses and minuses. So what is the image of you? Well, hopefully, it's a set that contains the letter grade A. All right. And remember, the image of a set is a set of numbers that go with those inputs. So here, it's just one. And again, maybe maybe we could have, you know, maybe it could be the image. All right, I'm making up names. This is not a FERPA violation. Maybe we have Bob and Janice. They should be in a set. All right, then maybe the image of that is A and C. Who knows? And again, notice this does not mean that Janice has a C. This means that someone in this set has a C and someone in this set has an A. The order is not a thing for sets. I can't stress that enough. Okay, we usually order things in ways that make sense to us as humans, but mathematically, it's not a thing. All right. And again, the book, the book would probably just say the image of you is A, and it would not have these sets here. But again, I just want to remind you that everywhere that I see image used in a mathematical sense always applies to sets, even if it's a set with only one element like we have right here. So that's how I'm going to use it um, because I believe that's the mathematical correct way. And many other people agree with me. So what about range? You're just going to have to come back and here, how does range interact with codomain? And we have some fun interactions that have to do with sets and subsets. And I don't want to spoil it for you, so I'll stop here. Goodbye.